Access to a dentist in Minnesota is a significant issue. There's a, a number of reasons why dentists um, are reluctant to see the Medicaid population, some of them very legitimate. However, at the end of the day, there's people in Minnesota that have to go far distances, and even some that live in urban areas where dentists are numerous have no access to dental care. There's dentists uh, being produced, however, the numbers of dentists produced are, are very static over the years and counter that with the fact that uh, the population is growing, the population is keeping its teeth longer, and so the numbers are not there. In Minnesota specifically, two-thirds of dentists are over 50 years of age. So when you look ahead, there really is a cliff coming where there are going to be just larger numbers of dentists retiring than new dentists being able to take their place. A dental therapist is a mid-level provider that the state legislature in Minnesota created in 2009. The dental therapist can be thought of as a physician's assistant or a nurse practitioner in the medical world that we're more familiar with. The particular practice profile of a dental therapist is is limited, so they can't do everything a dentist can do. However, they're what I would call a dentist extender. A dental therapist must work very tightly with a dentist and have what's called in Minnesota a collaborative management agreement, which is in essence a contract between the dentist and the dental therapist on just how they're going to work in that dentist practice. And first of all, a dentist in Minnesota doesn't certainly have to have a dental therapist. It's just, it's an available uh, provider that they can bring into their practice. And through this collaborative manager agreement, you define what procedures that therapist is going to do and, and the entire uh, flow of the care, what, what's going to be evaluated and checked, and um, how medical emergencies are handled. Etc. It's a very comprehensive process that uh, really defines their practice. The legislation in Minnesota has, has determined that a dental therapist must see 50% of their practice in Medicaid or underserved or underinsured or no insurance. When you use a lower cost provider, it really allows you to lower your entire costs which really help you uh, serve more people at a, at, a, at a better rate. Let's face it, the reimbursement for the Medicaid population across the country is not what uh, generally dentists would like to see it as. So by using a more effective cost model, it really allows you to have a lower cost uh, model in terms of being able to deliver care to more people. We worked through the process of getting a dental therapist to be in Minnesota and saw the whole process through. And, and I actually have to say that I was just very proud then to be able to hire one of those first graduates into our practice. And we did early in, min, in 2012. And, and just uh, a month ago, I hired a second dental therapist into our practice, which uh, is very exciting as well. I'm very pleased at the patient reaction to this new provider in our practice. You know, I've talked to a lot of physicians who, when physicians' assistants and nurse practitioners came to be, were very nervous about that. It's the fear of the unknown. They didn't know how these new providers would work with them. There were some turf issues involved. Dentistry is really going through those same issues right now. I encourage dentists to, to really be early adopters and get in there and help the profession figure out how a dental therapist can make their practice even better. Dental therapy won't in and of itself solve the access problem, but it's one more tool that we can use to shrink that number of Americans that don't have access to a dentist.